Lizzie is not a bit better than the others. I'm sure she's not half so handsome as Jane, nor half so good humoured as Lydia, but you're always giving her the preference. They have none of them much to recommend them, replied he. They are all silly and ignorant like other girls, but Lizzie is something more of quickness than her sisters.
and write great books and make extracts. Mary wished to say something sensible, but knew not how. While Mary is adjusting her ideas, he continued, let us return to Mr. Bingley. I am sick of Mr. Bingley, cried his wife. I'm sorry to hear that, but why did you tell me that before? If I had known as much this morning, I certainly would not have called on him. It's very unlucky, but I have actually paid the visit. We cannot escape the acquaintance now. The astonishment of the ladies was just what he wished. That of Mrs. Bennet, perhaps surpassing the rest. Though when the first tumult of joy was over, she began to declare that it was what she had expected all the while. How good it was in you, my dear Mr. Bennet, but I knew I should persuade you at last. I was sure you loved your girls too. Well, to neglect such an acquaintance. Well, how pleased I am that it's such a good joke too, that you should have gone this morning and never said a word about it till now. Now, Kitty, you may cough as much as you choose, said Mr. Bennet, and as he chose, as he spoke, he, he left the room, fatigued with the raptures of his wife. What an excellent far for you, of course, said she when the door was shut. I do not know how you will ever make amends for his kindness, or me either for that matter, at our time of our life. It is not so pleasant, I can tell you, to be making new acquaintances every day. For your sakes, we would do anything, Lydia. My love, though you are the youngest, I dare say Mr. Bingley will dance with you at the next ball. Oh, said Lydia stoutly, I am not afraid, for though I am the youngest, I am the tallest. The rest of the evening was spent in conjecturing how soon he would return Mr. Bennet's visit and determine in when they should ask him to dinner. Chapter 3 Not all the Mrs. Bennet, however, with the assistance of her five daughters, could ask on the subject, was sufficient to draw from her husband any satisfactory description of Mr. Bingley. They attacked him in various ways, with barefaced questions, ingenious suppositions, and distant sur surmises. But he eluded the skill of them all, and they were at last obliged to accept the second-hand intelligence of their neighbour, Lady Lucas. Her report was highly favourable. Sir William had been delighted with him. He was quite young, wonderfully handsome, extremely agreeable, and to crown the whole he meant to be at the next assembly with a large party. Nothing could be more delightful. To be fond of dancing was a certain step towards falling in love, and very lively hopes of Mrs. Bingley's heart was entertained. If I can see, one of my daughters happily settled in Neverfield, said Mrs. Bennet to her husband, and all the others equally well married, I shall have nothing to wish for. In a few days, Mr. Bingley returned Mr. Bennet's visit, and sat about ten minutes with him in his library. He had entertained hopes of being admitted to his sight of the young ladies, of whose beauty he had heard much, but he saw only the father. The ladies were somewhat more fortunate, for they had the advantage of ascertaining from an upper window that he wore a blue coat and rode a black horse. An invitation to dinner was soon afterwards dispatched, and already had Mrs. Bennet planned the courses that were to credit to her housekeeping. When an answer arrived which deferred it all, Mr. Bling Bingley was obliged to be in town the following day, and consequently unable to accept the honour of their invitation, etc. Mrs. Bennet was quite disconcerted. She could not imagine what business he could have in town so soon after his arrival in Hertfordshire, and she began to fear that he might be always flying about from one place to another, and never settled and never feel as he ought to be. Lady Lucas quieted her fears a little by starting the idea of his being gone to London, only to get a large party for the ball, and a report soon followed that Mr. Bingley was to bring twelve ladies and seven gentlemen with him to the assembly. The girls grieved over such a number of ladies, but were comforted the day before the ball by hearing that instead of twelve, he brought only six with him from London, 
five altogether, Mr. Bingley, his two sisters, the husband of the eldest, and the another young man. Mr. Bingley was good looking and gentlemanlike. He had a pleasant countenance and easy, unaffected manners. His sisters were fine women, and with an air of decided fashion, his brother in law, Mr. Hurst, merely looked at the gentleman, but his friend, Mr. Darcy, soon drew the attention of the room by his fine tall person, handsome features, and noble mien, and the report which was in general circulation. Within five minutes after his entrance of his oven, ten thousand a year, the gentleman pronounced him to be a fine figure of a man. The ladies declared he was much handsomer than Mr. Bingley, and he was looked at with great admiration for about half the evening, till his manners gave disgust, which turned the tide of his popularity, for he was discovered to be proud, to be above his company, and above being pleased, and not all his large estate in Derbyshire could have saved him from having a most forbidden disagreeable countenance. Elizabeth felt Jane's pleasure. 
much where they lived, and uh, of which they were the principal inhabitants, they found Mr. Bennett still up with a book. He was regardless of time, and on the present occasion he had a good deal of curiosity as to the events of an evening which had raged such splendid expectations. He had rather hoped that his wife's views on the stranger would be disappointed, but he soon found out that he had a different story to hear. Oh, my dear Mr. Bennett, as she entered the room, oh, he had such a most delightful evening, a most excellent ball. I wish you had been there. Jane was so admired and nothing could be like it. Everyone said how well she looked. Mr. Bingley thought her quite beautiful and danced with her twice. Only oh, think of that, my dear, he actually danced with her twice. And she was the only creature in the room that he asked for a second time. First of all, he asked Miss Lucas. I was so vexed to see him stand up with her, but however, he did not admire her at all. Indeed, nobody can, you know, and he seemed quite struck with Jane as she was going down the dance. So he inquired who she was and got introduced and asked her for the two next. Then the two third, he danced with Miss King and the two fourth with Maria Lucas, the two fifth with Jane again and the two sick with Lizzy and the Bollinger. If he had any compassion for me and cried her husband impatiently, he would have not danced with half so much. For God's sake, say no more of his partners. Oh, that he had sprained his ankle in the first dance. Oh, my dear, I am quite delighted with him. He is so excessively handsome, and his sisters are charming women. I never in my life saw anything more elegant than their dresses. I dare say the lace upon Mrs. Hurst's gown. Here she was interrupted again. Mr. Bennet protested against any description of finery. She was therefore obliged to seek another branch of the subject, and related with much bitterness of spirit and some exaggeration the shock and rudeness of Mr. Darcy. But I can assure you, she added, that Lizzie does not lose much by not suiting his fancy, for he is a most disagreeable, horrible man, not at all worth pleasing. So I am so conceited that there was no enduring him. He walked here and he walked there, fancy himself so very great, not handsome enough to dance with. I wish you had been there, my dear, to have given him one of your set-downs. 